So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with Google Earth Engine. And um, for using Google Earth Engine, you will have to go to the Google Earth Engine website. You would have to have a Gmail account and, um, and then go to the Google Earth Engine, um, Earth Engine website and then sign up. It will take you a few minutes um, also to get an answer that you have been approved to use Google Earth Engine. Um, but there should be no problem with that. Um, so today again, I will show you how to get started and the objectives are going to be how to open a data set, how to inspect the data, how to set the center of the map and how to set the zoom of the map. Also how to visualize the data with a gray, gray scale and how to apply a method to your data. So again, you already have Google Earth Engine. And um, one of the things that I think is useful to getting started um, is just to go to Google Earth Engine, right? This is the data set, uh, sorry, the Google Earth Engine website. And here you have the um, tab of data sets. Go to that, to the data sets, and you'll see that you have a bunch of different data sets, surface temperatures, climate, atmospheric, weather, all sorts of things. Um, for today's example, we'll go to explore elevation data for terrain. And um, I'm gonna keep scrolling down. You'll see that there's a lot of data sets, but I'm gonna go to a data set that is very, very useful in um, environmental research um, and, and engineering and which is the SRTM digital elevation data. And I will do another video related to um, all the uses of elevation data. But for now, we're just going to use the SRTM digital elevation data at 30 meters. And when you go to this, uh, to the different data sets, usually you have a little snippet of um, code that is very, very useful. Um, and we can go ahead and click here and open in code editor. And if you're already signed in into your Google Earth engine um, a login or into Gmail, it should take you directly to the um, to this page. And, um, and here we have different windows. You usually have these three windows, right? I am sorry, four windows, these three windows and then the one in the map. Um, and here in this area, we're just going to go ahead and, and click run. If you click run, you should get to see this a image and this image is a slope image and the slope image um, which here we can unclick to see where we are we're in some place close to Las Vegas okay and um, the reason that they selected that right is because they can have the Grand Canyon and then that we can get those extreme values of slope okay um, but Let's work in one of those beautiful places of North Carolina, um, particularly Asheville, which is one of my favorite places in North Carolina. Um, and one of the things that you can use in Google Earth Engine is use the inspector. When you click the inspector, then you get a crosshair here. And if I click here with the inspector, um, I can see where I clicked, which was in negative 82 uh, longitude and latitude 35, and it's telling me the scale um, of the where I'm working right now. So if I zoom in a little more, then I can click again. You'll see that the scale is finer. Now it's five meters per pixel. It's also giving me the value of the slope. So it's telling me that that slope over here, it's five. I'm not seeing the slope right now, but if I turn on the, the map, you'll see that I have the slope here. So, and you can see that this is probably gonna be a value higher, which is 32 in slope. And I can see it because it's, it's, it's a white color and the valley is gonna have a lower slope, right? Um, okay, so what are we gonna do now? So now you learned how to do, how to use the inspector, how to get some data from the data set but now what we're going to do is let's say you just want to work in in the Asheville area so already we clicked in the Asheville area and we can copy 
the longitude and the latitude. And I'm going to move it here to this part of the code. And I'm going to overwrite it. I'm going to paste it here. Um, and if I run it now, I'm going to get the same map, but now it's in the area of Asheville. Good. And um, you can see that we're in Asheville. So what is the other um, information that we're giving to Map Center? Well, we're also giving the zoom. And if again, if we want to go here, we can click in the inspector. And if we zoom in, we can also look at what was the zoom. The original was at zoom level 10. But if I click again, you'll see that now I'm in a higher level zoom. So let's say I like zoom 13. So I'm going to go ahead and put 13 here. And when I click run again, I can get the same map with the map center in Asheville and at a zoom value 13. Good. So what are we going to do next? So now I'm going to show you a little bit about the meaning of each line. So in the first line, we're saying, OK, so we're going to get some data set. Um, and the data set is this one, has this name. And how are we going to call that data set? We're going to call it data set. So that's why we like this line. Far space data set equals ee dot image, open parentheses, single quote, the name of the data set, right? And how are we going to name that data set? We're calling it data set, but I could have called it whatever I wanted. In fact, let me go ahead and do that. So let me call it SRTM. Okay, so what am I going to do in the next line? So in the next line, I am saying from that data set, which now I have to call it SRTM, from that data set, I'm going to select the band elevation. And how do I know the names of the available bands? Well, that's where you go to the data sets and you look into the information. Remember this, you have the descriptions of the data set, but you also have the bands. And in this case, we only have one band, which is called elevation, which is in the meters which has a minimum value of negative 10 and a maximum value of 6,500. A resolution of 30 meters, you get the idea. Um, so let's go back to that code. So in this line, I'm saying from the data set, right, which now I called SRTM, I'm going to select the band that is called elevation. And how am I going to call that? I'm going to call it elevation. I can change this also so you can see that I can name the variables whatever I want. I'm going to call it 11. OK? So great. So now let me do one thing. Let me uh, comment something. And this would, I do it by putting uh, forward slashes in front of the line. And that means that that line is going, not going to be uh, read by the code. Um, and um, it's being commented. So. Now you see that it looks green. That's to let you know that that's a comment. If I run this line now, I will get an error. You can see that in the console. It says slope is not defined in this scope. Well, why is that? Because after, because I commented that line, right? But I have here map, set center. This is all right. But then I have map at layer, and I'm saying at the layer slope, and there's no such thing as a slope. So you're telling me, well, where is that slope? Slope is not defined in this scope. All right, that's fine. So let's do the following. Let's call elev, which is the this information that we have created here. And in fact, I'm going to call it elev here. OK, and um, or elevation. Let's call it elevation. So I'm just going to click run. And we did not get any error in the console, but I got a white screen. Hmm, why is that? Let's see. So I have layers. I do have the elevation. But what's the problem? OK, so let's go look to the inspector. And I'm going to click in the inspector. And it seems like I do have the elevation. And I have a value 640. So what is the problem? Well, look at the problem over here. You have created. A new uh, you have added a layer to the map, which is elev, right? Which is the one that we generated here. But you said that you were just going to present 
values that go from 0 to 60 and you're gonna call that um, you're gonna call that um, that layer elevation okay and that's why we call it elevation we see the elevation here um, in fact I can call it differently so you can see there's different eleva elevation so let's call it in Spanish See, it's called elevación now. Okay, but we still have it white, so let's see. I want to see the data. And again, if I click here, I see that there's a 630, so that's why we don't see anything. I know that in the area of, um, of uh, Asheville, the mountains are no higher than 1,300 meters. So let's say I'm, I put here one, let's put 1,000. And I'm gonna click Run. So now we start seeing some information. Now we start seeing some elevation data. And if I go to the valley, I click, and I can see that the value is around 600. So let's just go ahead and put um, our minimum value to 600. And if I click Run, now we start seeing much better. But the highest point, you can see that it's some saturated white. Let's click there. See, it's around 1,200. So let's go ahead and put this in 1,200. I click Run, and now we can see a much better gradient. Um, and not some saturated values. Maybe the, the values are too low. Maybe you want to see a little more information in the value. So I'm, I'm changing the values in the mean. And I can see now a little more information up there. You can sort of see the river in a certain way. Okay, so this is important because you're seeing how to assign um, a, a grade scale to your data set. Okay, and also how to name your data set. So let's go ahead and, and bring again the slope value. I'm actually right here, I just copy paste it and I'm gonna write slope and let's just call it slope again. And let's see what this line does. Okay, so in this line, what I'm doing is I'm applying a method which is called ee.terrain and a dot slope is the method and I'm going to apply that to the data set elev, right? Because that's how I called it here, right? So, and I have to change this value because we don't have a slope in those values. Okay, so now let's run that. Let's hope it works. Yeah, it works. So we have both slope and elevacion, right? And you can see that. And Hopefully, this will get you started with Google Earth Engine.